Okay, we have 6.30 now, so I think we'll go ahead and get this meeting started. I want to welcome all of you to uh, attendance tonight for this meeting and appreciate everyone making the effort to be here. I feel like it's very important that we get together to share this information, so that's the goal of, of this evening. I have a lot of different activities going on across the community right now, and I just came in from the state uh, uh, basketball tournament for uh, 1A Division One that's going on right now, and uh, I'm supposed to be a sportsmanship judge, so let's hope everything's going well. So. All right, some logistics before we start. Uh, we have microphones around the table for each crew, and uh, our microphone, the school district microphone on this side, is tied to the presenter, so we can't both be talking at the same time. We ask that you use your microphone when you want to say something so that it uh, can be uh, transferred uh, with the Zoom going on and, and all of that information is shared and can be heard through the microphone. So that's, that's very important that we, we do that. And uh, I believe we want to take time to go through introductions. So we can do that now. Was there anything else I was supposed to say, Madam President? Not me, but everybody else needs to hold the microphone up is what I was just informed. So we'll go from there. But anyway, so let's start with the Board of Education. Jamie Lewis Gonzalez, Board of Education. Lisa Killian, Board President. Tammy West, Vice President. Jared Gertson. Ryan Hospice. Good evening, Michael Burns, Mayor of the City of Dodge City. Joe Nussi, Commissioner, City of Dodge City. Rick Sowers, Commissioner, City of Dodge City. Nick Hernandez, City Manager, Dodge City. Carol Nolte, Dodge City, <laughs> President. Gary Harshberger, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dot City Community College. Kathy Ramshire, Vice President of the Board of Trustees. Will Turley. Shelly Henricks. Jamie Phillips. J.D. Gilbert, Ford County Administrator. Don Tassett, Ford County Commissioner. Chris Boyes, Ford County Commissioner. Ken Snook, County Commissioner. Good evening, everyone, and, and thank you. For those that don't know me, I'm Ray Slattery, Director of Engineering for the City of Dodge. I um, appreciate everybody coming out to uh, pick a, or hear about this project. Um, I'm going to introduce our design team, um, consisting of Brett Lakowski and Brandon Stevens with Trans Systems and Kurth Lancaster with SMH. Um, you might ask how we got here at this point. When 2017, the city requested a traffic study on US 50 from city limits to city limits from KDOT through their traffic engineering assistance program. And as a result of that study um, and the desire of having a second entrance to the high school, KDOT initiated another study. And at that time, they hired Trans Systems to um, complete that study. The study was completed and found that it was feasible to have a second entrance um, from the highway onto uh, US 50 uh, with uh, some additional design work that would have to be done and some cooperation between KDOT, the city, the school district, uh, DC3, and the county because we all have properties that are, are right there at that intersection and needed to be, um, would need to be improved to make that intersection work. So that's how we got here. Uh, it's been a little bit of a trek. Uh, appreciate those that have stayed with us on that that journey, and uh, we'll, I'll turn it over to Brandon so that he can, or excuse me, Brett, and he'll he'll make a few announcements. I'll make this real short. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, just uh, so we're going to uh, hand out uh, the, the proposed concepts so you can see them in front of you. Uh, it's going to be very hard to see on these screens, even though, even though they're really big. It's we had to. They're going to look different uh, because of the, of the PowerPoint that we have on the screens. 
we had to cut this, the pages differently than what you see here. So you'll be able to look at these and see the differences or, or see that they're the same. Um, as we go through this, as, as Brandon goes through this, if you have questions, uh, please uh, raise your hand and we'll stop and well, he'll stop and ask, ask any questions through this. Um, <coughs> so with that, Brandon, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, thanks, Brett. Um, I'm going to use this TV over here. Uh, pull it up here. Uh, uh, as Ray and Brett mentioned, uh, we started from uh, a traffic study that was done for the Dodge City High School area, um, 2021. And then we wanted to progress through the discovery phase. And I'll walk you through the recommended improvements that we found and also the future improvements that we found. So here, uh, US 50, uh, the existing two lane undivided highway uh, goes from uh, Loretta Avenue, which is proposed Loretta Avenue over to 14th Avenue. Uh, this is not a signalized intersection and 14th Avenue is a signalized intersection. Uh, our recommended improvements for US 50, we're looking at going from a two lane undivided uh, at the Loretta Avenue proposed intersection. And we're gonna add a westbound and eastbound dedicated left turn lane. We're also gonna add a westbound dedicated right turn lane um, on Loretta Avenue. Uh, this intersection will be signalized. Uh, we do plan to have crosswalks at the intersection. Um, pedestrian sidewalks will be on the north side of US 50 and also on the south side of US 50. And also we are proposing, and if I can get the laser here for you. Uh, we're proposing a 10 foot trail that goes from Loretta Avenue here and goes east to 14th Avenue. Um, also at 14th Avenue, the intersection, we're going to add a dedicated right turn lane. And kind of deviating from the agenda, I'm gonna go and talk about uh, the Ford County and Dodge City Community College property. So uh, our recommended improvements, this is a two lane uh, undivided right now. At the intersection, we want to add a dedicated northbound left turn lane. We do want to uh, change the access point, which is further north to further south into the Santa Fe Community Corrections Facility. Uh, that's going to reconfigure this property where you'll have a proposed cul-de-sac and then you'll have access that's to the south uh, with additional parking. Uh, also, we want to uh, take the proposed sidewalk from the Loretta and US 50 intersection, take that further south to uh, the Dodge City Community Campus. Also, along this proposed 10-foot trail, we are proposing a connection to the Dodge City Community College uh, at this location. And the reason we want to have this connectivity is we wanna uh, have a better pedestrian access from the high school going down to the community college. Uh, I'll go up Loretta Avenue here to the north and kind of just walk you through our recommended improvements. So this next road plot here, uh, coming from the US 50 intersection, uh, going north towards Ross Boulevard, you're gonna have your first roundabout. It's a four leg dual lane roundabout. Uh, we're gonna keep access to Front View Street, which is further south of this roundabout. And I'll go back to that slide to kind of explain uh, that connectivity. Uh, one back further. Our previous, keep going. Kind of having some problems with this, with this clicker, but uh, this connectivity here. So at your roundabout to the north, uh, we're also going to maintain uh, access to Front View Street here. We're going to demo uh, a portion of Front View Street that goes across Loretta Avenue. On the west side of that roundabout, we are going to uh, have access from Jewel Road back down to the existing Front View alignment. Uh, at this roundabout, 
as you can see, we're going to have uh, sidewalks on either side uh, that keeps the connectivity for pedestrian access. And as far as drainage, we're just going to have an enclosed drainage system. So we'll keep the same drainage patterns as, as it is existing, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, stormwater runoff uh, flows to where it's going now. Uh, going up north along Loretta Avenue, uh, next slide, uh, one back, uh, two back, yep, right here. Um, Loretta Avenue is going to extend to the north. Uh, there is a Rodeo Hill subdivision uh, that's being planned at the moment and platted. Uh, we're going to have a stub out that connects to their infrastructure and their subdivision. And then further north, you'll have your second roundabout. That's going to be a full leg also, but single lane roundabout. Uh, you'll have access to uh, the school, uh, east side parking lot, this location. And you'll also have access to the north uh, side of the school, which connects to the loop that goes around to the west side of the high school. At this time, uh, speaking with the city, we did want to uh, realign um, Loretta Avenue going further north. Uh, in our study, Loretta Avenue was along the same existing uh, access road that's currently out there now, but we wanted to realign that so that Loretta Avenue would be within the existing city's right of way now. So going further north, we're going to tie into Ross Boulevard. We'll actually have two stub outs, one on the north, one on the west side, and that, that will be for future connection uh, for arterials. Uh, one slide previous. One more. Right there. So uh, as far as the Dodge City High School campus updates, as far as recommended improvements, coming off of Jewel Road onto Front View Street, we did uh, have that second access point that Ray talked about. Uh, that western access road is going to go up north. Uh, one more slide. And then we're going to include a third roundabout. This is a smaller roundabout. Um, from discussions with the school district, the school district wanted to separate uh, student traffic, bus traffic, and parent traffic. So we came up with the concept of this loop, parent loop here on the south side of the high school. Uh, this western access road will continue to the west side of the school. Uh, that access is going to be used for students. Uh, this access used for parents. And then the northern access will be used for bus traffic. Uh, this parent loop roundabout or loop outside of the third roundabout has two lanes. One lane is for drop off and pick up. The inside lane is for bypass. Also, at some future point, uh, maybe not a part of this project, uh, the school will probably add uh, seats for students, add maybe awning, uh, structures, landscaping uh, in the area of the parent loop. As for this project, we did include additional pedestrian connection to the horseshoe here. Uh, on campus, there will be four gates that will uh, be remote controlled to kind of separate uh, vehicle um, traffic between both of these parking lots. So this here will be for student parking lot, this here will be for parents and also teacher staff. Uh, once students are dropped off or picked up, they're using this access for pedestrian access and we want to keep them safe, so we're gonna have remote control gates that go up and down. Also, the school made us aware that some bus activity or traffic does use that horseshoe, so they'll be able to uh, go up and down as needed. Uh, one slide forward. So as far as bus traffic, bus traffic will use the north access, come down and use the east uh, parking lot here. Uh, that bus traffic will continue to go south. And you go one more slide back for me, please. Uh, at the request of, of the school, they did want bus traffic to come around, come south, come back north. And instead of using that north access uh, that we're proposing, they would use this exit only access here uh, that connects them to Southbound Loretta Avenue. Um, as far as what you see in the orange, and I know it's kind of faint, um, the school is also thinking about having additional uh, handicapped parking spots in that existing median, and also additional pedestrian sidewalk to connect them to the east side of the school. Uh, 
I want my slide up or two slides up. Oh, back forward for me. Keep going. Right here. So that uh, concludes the recommended improvements. Are there any questions on the recommended improvements? Yes. Where yeah. my slide? There. No. Nope. You were on. There you go. Just to the southeast of that traffic circle there is uh, they park trucks there. There's, there's a large truck shop there. Or is the access to that all coming down Front View Street? Or is there any access off of these, these other proposed lanes that you're building here to get into that property? Uh, to answer that question, we do have uh, access on this new proposed drive here. I uh, know it's kind of faint. Um, that's one access. And then the second access would be along Front View Street here. Uh, right. We would have that cul-de-sac. So all of, the, all of the truck traffic has to come from the east over at 14th Street all the way down Front Street to get to those two accesses. Number one... That's heavy trucks. Number two, trying to navigate that corner at 14th and turn back to the west on Front Street while you got cars parked there waiting at a stoplight all the time is nigh on impossible. I, I, I'm fearful you're going to have trouble if we don't have them some kind of access off of the new proposed road here at the west end of their property to get in and out of their yard. Uh, to maybe better answer that question, the truck traffic would be using the roundabout and coming around the back side of what is now the trucking company. Um, currently, they are utilizing uh, city right away for their parking lot and so we're gonna kind of reclaim our right away um, so they'll be able to utilize that that traffic circle is designed in such a way that the trucks can navigate navigate that circle uh, come around and then like Brandon was saying there would be a, a drive on the east side of that property and then um, the possibility of having one off of front view to the south so are like isolated it's it's creating like these new remnants that are isolated like on um, where kitchens is and Ellis James Inc they've just created like a rock sand like like parking lot but now there's gonna be a new remnant to the north of them and it, you're getting rid of part of their road it doesn't really show it on this slide I think it's the one prior to it but do they then like right there see where it's X and out front view do they then now absorb that as part of theirs, or is that KDOT, or who is be, who becomes the owner of that property that's, that's adjacent to theirs? I'll try to answer that question. Um, one of two things could happen. They'll, they'll still maintain access to the new front view. The driveway will be extended to, to the roadway. If the current configuration of front view is actually vacated, they would get half of the property or from from the property line out to the center line would become theirs. Um, and the same thing with the school district to the north, they would have a portion of that. I will tell you that the city does have a 12 inch water line from one of our water wells to the west of the high school that runs along along front view. So there would need still need to be maintained a utility easement. Um, that's one option. Another option would be is maybe the city retains ownership of that um, and could enter into some kind of an agreement for use of it. How about on the east side of the road 
where you have the three X's on front view, it looks like it creates a new yeah. yeah, yeah. On the east side, on the east side of Loretta, uh, where front view would be um, demoed out. Um, again, if it was vacated, it would go to the property owner on the north. South of that, on the south side of front view, is all KDOT right away. So it would either be retained as ownership by the city for just a. Uh, clear space for, for the highway, or I, KDOT isn't in, right now in, in the need of additional right-of-way at that area. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, just looking at this, why doesn't uh, Country Acres go ahead and continue all the way down so that we can allow access from these homeowners an exit on the south side? Um, for a number of years, there's been a desire of not having that access point. Um, so at this point in time, we, we haven't included that uh, connection between existing country acres at center and, and this new roundabout. Um, if the desire is there and we hear from the community or those neighbors, then you know that's something we could be looked at. The other part is, is um, we don't want to try and create a sh short circuit of, of the signal at the highway in, in uh, Loretta for kids trying to rush down um, country acres to get to 14th and causing more tra traffic issues there. So at that, that's, that's two of the reasons why we didn't connect it. But that means that uh, traffic for that new housing addition has to go strictly through Ross, right? At no, there is, a, there is a exit. Small one. Yes, there. yes. There's an exit onto there. We ha also, um, there is a possibility of that Rodeo Hills, if, if we can work with them, that they could have an exit onto this new roadway because they were, there is room for that, for that connection point before, before the road um, turns south. So we have, we have reached out to them, um, but we haven't got any feedback from them on that. But that would put that traffic right on front view, right? Is that well, it, it'd point? be front view and, well, it'd be front view out to the roundabout, then to the highway. Um, we don't think, many people would want to go down front view to 14th just because of the reasons that were mentioned uh, that the close proximity that there is to the traffic signal the delay in trying to get out onto 14th um, you, we feel that you probably have a better and a quicker chance of getting out onto the highway uh, through the signal at loretta that's what i mean i think country acres allows that distance between 14th and the highway to that you could get out there, but that's that's me. I, I'd like to have that. Look. Yeah, um, and these are just this is phase one of the improvements. Um, full build out. There's some more improvements that need to happen at 14th and US 50, and, and Brandon will will get to those shortly. And that's going to eliminate some of that access probably from Front View and Country Acres onto 14th. I know you're a good engineer, but I, I just want to know. You ever been there? Huh? Yes. I'm going to tell you one thing about it. We were thinking of it. We were thinking of it. Yeah, we understand that. That's why we're looking at the second entrance. Well, um, you know, roundabout is one of the safest way to have an intersection that speeds you through. Um, you don't have to wait on a signal. You don't have the cost of a signal to operate and maintain. So um, it's just it's just another option for a intersection. Are there any other questions? Yes. So just, just looking at the map with Rodeo Hills and the new housing addition that's going in, will they have direct access to Ross Boulevard to just come out on that road? 
Yes, currently there are two access points from the Rodeo Hills South subdivision that will access Ross Boulevard to the north of the subdivision. Uh, we, do, we don't have that on the slide uh, due to the distance from the uh, proposed Ross and Loretta intersection. Um, the one that comes down along from the intersection, um, the plan is to extend it to your technology buildings. Um, so I'm, I, I, there may be a little bit of a gap in there between sidewalks, but the plan is, is to bring it down about that far. You can see here with the blue, the blue lines that would represent the sidewalk. <laughs> Any, anything's possible with with enough funding. There has been talks with KDOT to reduce the speed. Um, so uh, the district engineer is aware of this, and we, we know we've kept them abreast of everything that we're doing here. So uh, there, there has been some, some discussion on reducing that, coming around the curve, actually reducing it all the way past the casino entrance. If there's any other, no other questions, I think Brandon has a, just a little bit more to go. So those were the recommended improvements. Uh, this, this roll plot here is showing the future improvements. Uh, the intent is that the recommended improvements would be constructed first, and then these future improvements will uh, happen after that. So the roundabout, as you can see, uh, north of US 50 would be constructed. I know it's kind of hard on this slide to see it, but all the gray area is the future improvements. Uh, you'll have an additional southbound right turn lane on Loretta Avenue here. Uh, Loretta, US 50 would go from a two lane divided to a four lane undivided. That includes adding a additional through lane east and westbound at the Loretta Avenue intersection. Uh, you'll have a full reconstruction from this point going over to 14th, a little past 14th Avenue, and then you'll have a full reconstruction of 14th Avenue at the intersection of US 50. Uh, these improvements would cause uh, the traffic signal to have to be modified at 14th Avenue here, and also you will have some modification to the drainage system along 14th Avenue. Uh, these are the future recommendations or future improvements. Uh, any questions? Uh, no questions. I will have Kirsch Lancaster come up with SMH Consultants. Uh, he's the landscape architect, and he'll talk a little bit about the recommended and future improvements as far as landscaping. Um, I'll, yeah, it, it's working. Um, so good. Uh, okay, well, with the landscape, we're going to try to keep this simple as we can for right now because we are at a very preliminary stage of the project. Um, you know, mainly we're f our focus on the landscape has been to just provide street trees where we can up Loretta, all the way from Highway 50 up to Ross. Um, there's going to be some storm sewer infrastructure that's going to have to happen along the along the east side of Loretta so the mainly the focus where we can do street trees will be on the west side of Loretta um, you can see where all the dotted areas um, there's going to be a ton of grading that's going to go on with this project and so basically all of those areas get returned back to turf as they are now um, unless 
pieces of this that, you know, if the district wants to do more or something like that, or there's funding um, that they want to push towards things, um, we can do that for them. Um, at the roundabouts, uh, we'll have a nice, pretty large landscape area in those. Um, we've talked with the, the school district through some of this in the city. Um, kind of right now, kind of the plan is to, is to create like a low wall with some signage of, you know, welcome to Dodge City High School as you enter in to the first roundabout. And then we'll have like a second roundabout that's similar there. Um, it, right now, that's kind of all it's been with just some ornamental landscaping that will go along with it. Um, it could be a lot more, um, but again, like Larry mentioned, we're, I mean, we can do a lot with funding. So um, right now, that's kind of what's been planned. Uh, to happen, and that's what's been included in the budget numbers, is to provide some sort of low wall with some um, signage for the high school. Along the trail along Highway 50, it's going to just going to be a continuous of what you see along Highway 50 right now. We'll have a few nodes. I think there's three of them right here along the highway at the intersection of them, and then at the little uh, connection to the community college, we'd have, you know, bench trash can little bit of landscaping around that. Um, so that's pretty much all we have for right now for the landscaping that's part of this project. Um, again, as we get further into this and understand funding more, I mean, we can for sure expand your question. Thank sure. you. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's only on the east side of Loretta, um, going north to south and going to US 50. No further questions. questions? Yep. So, at, um, Kurth, if you want to hand out. Uh, the other exhibit, I'll kind of go through the exhibit that you have in front of you now. Uh, it's kind of color-coded color while Curve hands out the next exhibit, and I'll explain that exhibit for you. So at the discovery phase uh, that we're at, we did do an opinion of probable costs, construction costs for the recommended improvements and future improvements. We did put together this jurisdiction limits exhibit to show you how we broke out the costs uh, for recommended and future improvements. What you see in blue is along US 50, that would be within the Dodge City KDOT limits and that cost would be uh, passed off to Dodge City KDOT. What you see in green is the limits for Dodge City, those improvements. What you see in red is uh, the district's uh, improvements, and what you see in magenta, pink there, is the Ford County Dodge City Community College improvements. We also did the same thing for the future, for the future improvements. Along US 50, you would see it in blue, that's the Dodge City KDOT limits, and what you see in green is the Dodge City limits for 14th Avenue, those improvements. Uh, what we're estimating now is that the recommended improvements are 11.7 million and the future improvements are 5.8 million. Um, I will invite Ray and Brett up. They will go through the cost breakout uh, that we just provided to you. And well, Kurt will uh, get those out to you. And these are just uh, our funding uh, budgets for the recommended and future improvements based on these limits. And that exhibit will be, oh, it'll be this exhibit that they're gonna hand out to you. I got the fun, the fun topic here. Um, as Brandon mentioned, 
um, the area that is in the, oh, the cyan or the, the light blue would be the intersection improvements. Um, and that would hopefully be a partnership between the city and KDOT. There's a couple different programs that we're hoping that we can apply for with um, the rec um, letters of recommendation from others at the state or with the, in the community with KDOT to help with that. It might be a cost share through KDOT or a C-CLIP program. Um, unfortunately, those don't, don't fund a whole lot, but um, on phase one of that, the cost is shown at, um, you're gonna have to excuse me, I gotta get my glasses out. Shown at uh, basically $2.876 million. Um, what's shown in green is the city's share, and if, if you remember the, the slide that we broke everything out or that you have in front of you, that's uh, the front view and Loretta portion of the project, which was the city's. Um, you're looking at close to $5.2 million. The city has a couple different funding sources that we could use that for. Um, we have um, our, just our capital improvement, like everybody, uh, the other entities here. Uh, we have RHID, which um, can help fund that because it would be a secondary access for the Rodeo Hills development. And um, then um, the sales tax, if that, if that is so desired. Uh, USD 443. Uh, which is kind of the uh, orange or the red color. Um, a lot of that is on campus, and we had spoke with uh, staff and, and other members of the district about what they would want to have done. They were also looking at maybe doing some traffic improvements prior to us starting this project, so everybody kind of held off until this was done. But um, that share of the project is 3.3 million. And then um, the, I'm gonna say purple, since the cats are playing tonight. Um, there towards the bottom of the screen, which would be the uh, south entrance into the uh, DC3 and to the uh, uh, Ford County Correction Center uh, is 300,000. So, and then the future improvements, um, which would be everything out there, uh, the rest of Highway 50 between Loretta and 14th and 14th East, or Highway 50 East of 14th, the intersection, um, the partnership, or the, would be a joint effort between the city and KDOT, it would be 1.3 million, and then, or excuse me, 4.5 million, and the city's share beyond the uh, KDOT right of way is $1.3 million. So, um, you know, we have on the agenda a partnership, and that's at the bottom of the um, talking about this funding, but that's, that's probably something that would, should be at the top because to make this happen, it's going to need to be a, a partnership between all the entities. Um, it's something that's been looked at or desired from the community since the high school opened in 01 is to have a secondary access into the high school. I know that there's now a lot of programs that are being like dual administered between the high school and the college. And uh, we have a lot of kids that are doing the basically a mile and um, a quarter jaunt from the high school, actually a little further than that by the time they get around, but um, from the high school to the college or, um, just running across the highway, which isn't safe. Um, so it's something I think that is um, needed by the community and so something that we'll continue to work forward. We are just at the end of the discovery phase. We have not started final design. That's yet to come. Um, so what you see here is uh, somewhat of the final concept. Doesn't mean that it won't it may not get it may get changed once we get into design 
Um, so um, don't take this as standard. So something I learned today too. We were I was in Scott City for a um, bipartisan infrastructure law. Part of that is a lot of funding opportunities, and one of the things that uh, Dot City has won an award for was for the straight, safe streets for all. And the way that that's looked at is they looked at census tracts um, to be able to do improvements for the streets. I did find something out today which is new, which I don't think Tanner and Ray um, know about, but if since we're designated as an entire community, we can look at every street, every roadway within our community um, to make application regardless of census track. Um, it just has to be in that plan which could potentially open up additional funding to help us, you know, through KDOT to make these improvements to, for the sidewalks to 14th Street and potentially other roadways within our community. So um, that's a potential funding source uh, that we'll be looking at as well. On the value of the uh, estimates you have here, I know these are all early preliminary. Is this considered like an absolute dollar or is there in kind? Like, I mean, we do dirt work all day, every day. Is this something that we could utilize, um, maybe helping knock some of this down? This is a uh, basically a turnkey price. If if we hired a contractor and they started from day one um, with the project, so. Well, I know we looked at the our, our portion of the funding, um, you know, $5 million project um, for phase one. We looked at that rural housing incentive district as paying for a portion of it. There may be some bonding um, capacity that we have to look at for a portion of it as well. Um, the KDOT side of things, that's something we're just gonna have to work with KDOT to see how much funding we can get. Um, when it comes to private side of things and school district, I can't answer where that funding would come from. It's not like they're not, they won't be eligible for KDOT grant or a lot of the other grants and then the portion for the Ford County DC3, it is at the right of way. So if we don't have the right of way, we can't really include that in, into those um, project costs. As far as feasibility, you know, we, we plan big projects every year. I know you all do too. It's just trying to fit it into the, into uh, where it's gonna fit into your order of of priorities and I think it's the same with the school district you know, trying to figure out how they fit it into their budget and and um, what it ultimately ends at the end of the day because we, we can get our portion done the you know, school district may not have to take as aggressive approach on their internal improvements you know maybe it's more of a phased approach with them um, for us we're gonna have to ha kind of lead the charge if we're gonna do it because we have to have that connection to the highway and to Ross to make it feasible for the other components to take place but it's something we have looked at, and RHAD will probably help um, substantiate with a, with a big portion of that Loretta Phase One. One thing with the public is, um, <clears throat> I think since 01, they've wanted a second access to the high school. So um, we're 20 plus years in, and um, so I think it'll be it'll be welcomed. Um, the price tag is always something that you have to deal with. Um, 
unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get any cheaper. With that, I'll have Brandon go over where we could go from this point uh, as far as the future schedule of the project, and um, we'll then open it up for questions. We're not planning on using any of the street sales tax money for this, not this point. We have other roadways that we need to get a get working on as well. So as far as the future schedule, uh, if we move forward to the final design phase of the project, we're looking at field check plans being delivered August of this year. Uh, that would include some supplemental survey uh, as far as a project analysis, Geotech Sioux, uh, subsurface utility engineering, uh, right of way acquisition and utility relocation coordination would start in August. And then we would have a CD and KDOT review of those field check plans in September. We would then progress to the office check plans, uh, deliver those by November. Uh, that's just pretty much plan refinement and detailed development of the plans. Again, CD and KDOT would review those plans uh, December 2023. Final check plans uh, will be delivered in January of next year, and then final plans uh, would be submitted February 2024. Advertisement construction to be determined, but that would be the future uh, schedule as far as final design of the project. And questions and answers, we can open that up now. One thing I might add is um, through some of this legislation that has come out recently, we have seen that if you have a shovel-ready project, um, you get moved up the scale or up the ladder to be funded. So um, by continuing on with the design, we will have a shovel-ready project in basically a year from now. So we'll open it up to any questions that anybody may have. You know, you, you see these students running. We've got a large population now of, of, of students coming from the high school to the college and running back and forth. And I see them running across Highway 50. It just concerns me a little bit. That's all. I mean, it's, I, I know there's not much we can do about it. Um, but there, I mean, I, I see that, you know, especially when the winter months, it gets pretty cold and they're running across and, and going into their, to their classes, whether it be, you know, our, academic or whether it be the, you know, works, workforce stuff. So I don't know how you resolve that. I don't think you can, but it is what, they, it, is what it is. We, it is taken into account here because you do have the crosswalk, pedestrian crosswalk across the highway. So it would, would have an activated crosswalk where they could push a button and get across there. Um, I believe there's only one access point or two access points across the highway. Cross. Two access points. Is there, there's two crossings then, okay, um, uh, for that intersection. And then having the sidewalk going along there, we've seen a lot of individuals come from the high school, this walk that ditch, you know, and if you at least have a little bit of order of, of where they're supposed to walk, they tend to follow it a little bit more than just the free for all that we're seeing currently. And, and we do recognize there's a tremendous amount of foot traffic that leaves that, that high school and the college um, in, in going back and forth. The bridge would probably add about three to four million to the cost, and, and, and probably at least higher than that. What would you guess that bri bridge, pedestrian bridge over high would be? It might be as much as the city portion of the improvements, to be honest. Getting it permitted would be a, a nightmare. <laughs> well, 
it, yeah, we're all aware of, of the kids that, um, you know, are, are leaving the high school and, and headed to the college or, or even just on their way home, they go across the highway. Uh, KDOT's aware of it. Um, you know, we can't just put a sidewalk and a street crossing across there without having um, some kind of protected control for the kids to, you know, a signal there to push so that the, the highway traffic goes red, just like at the other crossings we have in town. Um, that's one of, one of KDOT's regulations is we just can't put a sidewalk leading up to the highway and expect uh, the travelers on the highway to abide by that sidewalk being right there. Well, seeing no other questions, I'd like to thank everybody for attending this evening. Um, I believe there is some uh, some supper over there available for everybody if if, if you so would like to partake. And uh, again, thank you. And we'll we'll be around for a little while. So if you have some other questions, you can you can catch one of us. Thank you. <laughs>